Hi, I'm Kelly. I want to talk about the recurring theme of You Can't Escape the Past in Babylon Revisited by F. Scott Fitzgerald. Um, I think that this was a really smart choice to incorporate that into the story because when you're a recovering addict, you know, it's kind of hard to escape the past. And I just think that was really smart of um, F. Scott Fitzgerald to include that in the story and kind of helps the story flow, makes it seem more realistic. Um, so Charlie, he's the protagonist. He is a recovering alcoholic. Um, he lost his wife, Helen, and his daughter, Honoria, is staying with his brother-in-law and his sister-in-law, Lincoln and Marion. Uh, he's on his way, well, he goes to Paris to try to convince them that he is well enough to have Honoria back. Um, so in the beginning, he gets to Paris and he's at this bar. He allots himself one drink a day, and it's kind of like he makes himself drink that one drink a day so it doesn't really become a, like something that he wants, you know? like he has to do and I guess that makes sense um so he's at the bar and the bartender Alex you know he's having his Charlie's having his one drink and his bartender Alex is like you know you used to be able to drink a lot more are you sure you don't want another one and Charlie was like oh yeah I'm trying to get my daughter back one drink a day and it's just like immediately as soon as he get back gets back in Paris he's hit with that of his past like you used to be able to drink a lot more so he gets to um <clears throat> Marion and Lincoln's and, you know, he's not going to bring up the fact that he's there to get Honoria back first thing. He's going to, like, test the waters, read the room, and see if it comes up naturally before he talks about it. So, uh, he's talking to Lincoln and Marion, and, you know, he's just laughing, cutting up. He's like, oh yeah, in the bar this afternoon. And Marion goes, Shouldn't, don't you think you've had enough of bars? And Charlie was like, oh, yeah, you know, he realized what he's done. Like, he shouldn't have said that, even though it's just he's not really doing anything wrong. And he was like, oh, yeah, um, I allot myself, you know, one drink in the afternoon, you know. And he explains, like, his whole routine and how it keeps him from being attracted to it. And it's almost like Lincoln is kind of, like, testing that to see how far he'll go with it. Because he's like, are you sure you don't want a cocktail with dinner? And Charlie's like, yeah, I just said one drink in the afternoon. I just had it at the bar, so... Um, there's like this recurring um, motif of alcoholism, of course, because he's an alcoholic, but after he leaves um, Lincoln and Marion's, he walks out, he's walking around, and these dancers come towards him, and he's like, he must be damn drunk, so it means like this like resentment towards them, whether it's towards them being drunk or the fact that it reminds him of him being drunk, he just has this disdain towards them. Um, and he starts remembering how he would just throw away money on like fancy orchestras and valleys and stuff, stuff that really isn't, that you're not gonna have, you know what I mean? And um, so he's eating with Honoria at the only restaurant that doesn't remind him of his champagne fueled nights and being drunk and partying and blowing money. But in the fact that it's the only one that does not remind him of that, it's sort of like it's reminding him of that. So it's the, initially that thing again that like, you can't escape it. So it's, that's rough. Um, but he's still eating with Honoria. Honoria, sorry. And uh, Lorraine and Duncan, who he calls the ghost of his past, come in. They're absolutely drunk. And they're like, oh my god, Charlie, are you sober? Oh my god. And they're kind of like bullying him for being sober. Lorraine's like, pinch him, Duncan. See if he's actually sober. In front of his daughter, Honoria. And he's like, look, like motioning towards her. Like, I'm here with my kid. I'm trying to eat. Like, please go away. And I guess they finally take the hint and they go... But, um, once back at the house, he decides to start explaining why he's okay enough to have an Aurea. And, uh, he's comparing and contrasting his past and present. And by doing that, he's kind of reliving it. So again, he can't escape it because he has to compare it to show his growth. So, uh, while he's doing that, Marion just goes, how long are you going to stay sober, Charlie? And he was like, well, hopefully permanently. And, uh, Marion's just mad because, um... He, she blames him for the death of her sister Helen, which is Anoria's mother. Uh, and she's like, well, you locked her out in the snow. And he didn't get the chance to explain why. Like, he didn't mean to lock her out. He just assumed that she wasn't coming home. And um, while that didn't directly cause her death, she, she died of like heart problems. But she blames that in causing the death, like leading up to it. 
So, but once he's tried to explain that, she's like, I don't want to talk about it no more. And he's like, okay. Um, and then she goes, well, why didn't you think of Anoria before? Like, you were drinking and doing all this. You had Anoria. Why weren't you thinking of her then? And he said that he agreed to the guardianship when he was at his lowest point. Like, now he's like, I'm a functioning adult. I'm ready. I'm ready to have my kid. Like, I was not functioning then, and that's my fault. Like, that was me. That's my screw up. But now I'm ready. And he's like, I have money, like, I have a job, I'm not an alcoholic. And she's like, oh, money that you're just going to throw away again? And it's like, she's not, she's just assuming that he's going to be doing all these things, that he's going to go back into that. And the tension causes him for the first time in over a year to actually want a drink. And so he leaves, and when he leaves, he can't stop thinking about Helen. And making all these plans with Honoria makes him remember all the plans that he had with Helen. So this kind of like parallel here he can't escape um he gets a letter from Lorraine saying that she wants to hang out for old time's sake he ignores it um Lincoln and Marion initially decide that Car that Charlie can take on Honoria but when he goes to meet up to discuss it with them Lorraine and Duncan burst in absolutely drunk and he's like get out and go away like I don't want to talk to you I don't want to meet up with you I'm here to get my kid go away and they're like, oh, let's hang out. And he's like, yeah, sure, sure, I'll call you later, whatever. You know, just blowing them off. And it, Marion's not having it. She storms off. Charlie leaves. Uh, he's haunted by the memories of partying and being around nothing but drunks and throwing his money out the window. And he calls Lincoln to see if he had any luck with Marion. And she tells him to wait another six months before he can have an Oreo. And after the call, you know, he's at the restaurant. The waiter offers him another thing of whiskey. And after that heartbreaking call, he still refuses it. So all of these pieces in the past keep coming up and trying to get in the way of his goal, getting, ruining the chances of him getting his daughter back. But he stays strong, and he doesn't turn to alcohol because he's actually changed, even though he's still haunted by his past. Thank you.